All right, once again, I am coming through here with what is hopefully a super quick tutorial on how I do something on the computer. I've been asked many times how I get a lot of my 4K 60 frames per second video captures on the computer uh, for desktop shots and tutorials and things like that. And I'm gonna be showing you here today in some screwed up mode. So I'm gonna switch the screens. Nope, okay. So you're gonna look at a little bit of an infinite loop here for a moment because I'm using NVIDIA Shadowplay to record OBS, which is also recording its desktop. So what I use for all of my desktop captures of actual desktop stuff, tutorials, things like that is open broadcaster software and specifically OBS Studio. They've completely ceased development on the original classic OBS. But I have a very special setup going so that way I can utilize my hardware as efficiently as possible and be able to record a full 4K 60 FPS stream without any CPU usage. For example, I'm recording it with basically the same method right now. 5.3% CPU usage, that's actually fairly high. Usually it's around two or three for whatever I'm recording and it goes quite well. So I use OBS Studio. I'm currently on 17.0.2, but 18 just came out and I will be updating. I use two special things to make what I do happen. For example, the first one is this plugin called Advanced Scene Switcher which allows me to watch the preview. It automatically switches between my desktop monitors and then with that disabled, I can do that manually. But when I'm doing complicated like editing tutorials that involves going over here to my you know, project panels and then work in the main timeline and stuff, having it automatically go is super handy. So I use, it, it says automatic here, but the actual plugin is called Advanced Scene Switcher. I'll have a link to it in the description down below I don't like the one that's built in as well. I've set up screen regions here uh, for my monitors, and then I just have it set to automatically switch to them based on where I my cursor's at, which is really handy. And then if I turn it off, I hit stop, I can manually choose scenes or open up a webcam view here. I do have my Logitech Brio webcam going. Hello, I'm behind the microphone. Yeah, all right, so for video settings, if we go into settings here, I have things set to 3840 by 2160, my main monitor resolution, the resolution that I prov uh, blah, 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 that I make my videos at, 59.94 FPS, pretty straightforward. Audio, I have my main microphone output port from my mixer, the main out port from my mixer, and then I choose the default desktop device for line one, and for line two, I have uh, secondary audio out which would record voice over IP or something like that when I'm recording that then those all go through the OBS mixer here and you can see the audio levels down here and I have them spaced out to separate tracks in most cases I've recently added an audio device which kind of reset things which is really obnoxious uh, but this is what the mixer looks like I'm glad Ooh, I'm actually really afraid I may have just recorded a tutorial that had the audio totally botched because of that. That's going to suck. Time for a reboot. Okay, well anyway. <laughs> oh OBS, you drive me nuts. So main mic is line one. So even if I just raw upload the video, that my microphone is picked up and uploaded. Line two, main desktop audio. Line three is secondary microphone audio. Line four is secondary desktop audio. And then over in my output settings, I have it set to record all four tracks to an MP4 file using NVENC, NVENC, H264. This is the NVIDIA graphics card encoder, which can record virtually anything with no CPU impact because it's using the graphics card's video built-in video processing. And so I'm able to get full 4K 60 FPS gameplays of game, or recordings of gameplay, of desktop captures, and so on. And I have it set to lossless to get the highest possible quality because I have a beefy processor to back it up and it is all ready to go. And to handle the high bit rate, I have it set to record to a secondary solid state drive in here that I've installed just for the purposes of recording here. So that is what my setup looks like. NVENC, then I have lossless, higher performance, because high quality isn't a thing, and of course I want performance. Profile set to high, I leave level on auto, and then use two pass encoding. The files from it aren't that bad. For example, this is a 31 minute file and it is 6.37 gigabytes and it was used it recorded using the lossless recording and it's only doing roughly 28 29 megabits per second which isn't a lot i 
I normally have it set to record 200 megabits per second, but since it's desktop footage, it literally doesn't have anything to give it that much information, and so it ends up not using the full bitrate, which is kind of cool. I just kind of set like a catch-all. And then all of my audio tracks that I record are set to 320 kilobit per second. That is the audio that everyone should be using on YouTube. And that's pretty much it. NVENC NVENC takes over and records everything with no problems using OBS or the built-in shadow play. But OBS gives me multiple audio tracks, better audio quality, and I get to do some custom things and bring in webcams and things like that. So this is what I use to record my videos. Wanted to show it off. I've had many questions about it. Just wanted to let you know. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it helpful or useful, smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.